Pura Vida. Hello, everybody. My name is Bruna, if you don't know me, aka Mystic Brew on Instagram and TikTok. And I am here because we just did a retreat in Costa Rica. And I wanted to do a quick reflection before it got too late. You know, I just got back yesterday morning. I'm still processing the entire experience in real time. Um, but there were some things I really wanted to share. And so I wanted to make sure to record this in a very informal way, clearly, like, hi, um, just to share it with you, to share that whole experience with you. So for those of you who don't know, I am the founder of Return to Self, where I aim to help you remember who you were before the world taught you who to be. I use mysticism and coaching techniques to help you do that. And we just did our first retreat in Costa Rica, specifically in Playa Hermosa in the Guanacaste province. And it was the most beautiful experience. It exceeded all of my expectations. But before we dive in, let's go back to how we got here. Roughly um, a year ago, I guess, I was approached by Trova Trip to see if I would be open to hosting a retreat in partnership with them. Obviously, I was like, yes, I did the whole survey. I did all the steps and Costa Rica was at the top of that list. And funny enough, they ended up offering a new itinerary in Costa Rica that I had my eye on because of the sunset boat ride. I was like, you know, I got to be on that boat. So we were able to do that itinerary. And I just got off the feedback call with our account manager and that itinerary isn't even offered anymore. So my retreat group was the first and last group to experience that um, excursion in Costa Rica. And it was a beautiful, beautiful um, way to build community and heal. So the Return to Self retreat is obviously um, a wellness retreat. It is all about gaining a deeper perspective of yourself and others of healing in whatever way that you need. And so within the excursions and the sort of itinerary that's already laid out for whatever location we decide, I also implement my own workshops and healing experiences within the retreat so that we can dive a little deeper. We did the whole planning for roughly a year and then it came time to go to Costa Rica and I had no idea what to expect. You know, it was my first retreat. It was my first time going to Costa Rica. It was a lot of firsts for me and also my first time hosting something like this. And there was a lot of fear with that too. You know, it was like, do I need to show up a certain way? Do I need to, um, you know, make sure that I'm like able to, I mean, of course I'm able to hold space. I do this shit, but it's, you know, there's a lot of sort of internalized pressure and then the dates we chose ended up being during Mercury retrograde and a full moon lunar eclipse. And I was like, fuck, did I just fuck everything up by <laughs> doing it on these dates? Um, and I couldn't tell you, literally, I think it added to the magic. I think it really did. And it was the entire experience was a perfect illustration of trust and surrender and so I went out to Costa Rica <clears throat> a day before everyone arrived just to get things ready. I had these very beautiful gift bags prepared for everybody. Thank you to the women-owned small businesses that donated product for our travelers' gift bags. Misha with her jewelry, Kashira with her tarot decks, Nisanja with her candles and her bracelets, Tiff with her um, happiest hour drinks. There were so many beautiful additions to that gift bag and it wouldn't have happened without these amazing creators who are tagged below. Please support their small business, support them. They are doing wonderful things in the world. And um, it's a lot to donate product, especially for a small business. So that doesn't go unnoticed. So please, please, if you are interested, support them, check out their business and share it with your friends. They were so generous that my entire check bag was gift bag stuff solely. It was literally just gift bag stuff and my hiking boots. And that suitcase was nine pounds over the limit. So I had to pay an overweight fee 
and I got held up in customs, which is hilarious because my boy who was uh, with us, he was grabbing content for me and he was also kind of like our designated bodyguard. He was very adamant on taking his machete, which is legal in Costa Rica, but I was still kind of like, because <laughs> you know he had, he wasn't checking a bag so he asked if I could take it and I was like bro if they like if they check my bag and they see that machete and they take it I'm not fighting for it just so you know it's gone like it's gonna be taken he's like that's fine if that's what happens that's fine and sure as shit custom stops me and I'm like fuck here we go you know and when I tell you they didn't give two shits about the machete, but they did give a shit about all the candles and bracelets and books and things that I was taking. I don't know. I guess they thought I was trying to like smuggle shit in or sell shit. I don't know. But I was like, no, son regalos, son regalos. And he was like, what are you even saying? And I was like, I'm, I'm hosting a retreat. And I tried to show him all the evidence I could. And it was fine. You know, they didn't take anything. He was looking at my passport. And he was like, oh, it's your first time. I was like, yes. So like, please make it a good experience, you know, but everything was fine. I was able to keep all my stuff. I just had to like declare some things went and we stayed at the Bosque del Mar, Bosque del Mar hotel, which was beautiful, beautiful place. If you're ever thinking of going to Playa Hermosa, I definitely recommend, um, the food was delicious. The views were delicious. The views were delicious. I mean, they were, you know, they were, And so for seven days, we stayed at this beautiful hotel in Playa Hermosa. We had an amazing local guide from Discova, Mayer, who was, I mean, he made the trip. This man is so knowledgeable about Costa Rica. He's knowledgeable about the animals, the history. He knew where to go. He knew where to get food. He knew the good spots for everything. And he just him, like his energy, his personality really added to the trip. So Mayer Thank you for adding such beautiful magic to our trip and for being so patient with us um, as we sort of just took in whatever Costa Rica had to offer. So it just so happened that this retreat was all women, um, and I wasn't surprised by that. I do have a fairly even demographic of women and men, but when I do offerings for whatever reason, women are the ones that are more inclined to invest men just, I don't know. I don't know. What is it y'all? I don't know. You like to watch me do things, but you don't necessarily feel inclined to invest in taking action. So hopefully that changes because I do want to work with men as well. But this was a wonderful group of women. It was primarily all strangers, you know, to an extent, I knew all of the women through the work that I do, everyone who ended up going on the retreat was someone who I've offered a service to, whether that's readings or uh, birth chart readings or um, coaching calls, whatever that is. But I think I'd only met like one or two in person at healing events. And so it was beautiful to see everyone come together. No one knew each other. Everyone only knew each other through the Instagram lives or the things I would do on Instagram. And it was just like immediate community. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. It was incredible. The first night we have a welcome dinner because the arrivals are kind of throughout the day. So we wait till everyone gets there and then we have a welcome dinner. We had a welcome dinner at the hotel which they set up beautifully, by the way. And, you know, it's the first night. You don't know what to expect. So everyone was kind of like, oh, hello, you know, hi, you know. <laughs> um, And I made fun of them a few days later because I was just like, y'all were coming up in here all nervous. Like, oh, hello. Hi, this is who this, I'm this person. What, who are you? Okay. And then by a couple of days later, I was like, girl, did it. And I was just like, I love it. I love it. And this is why travel is so magical to me because when you travel, whether it's by yourself or with friends or with a group of strangers, you don't leave the same. You can't. That experience is so important. It brings you either closer together or in some cases it can tear you apart even if it's your closest friend and in this case these are new friendships that was that were formed this is a community now that was solidified based on a commonality based on a common interest which was healing and me you know it was like 
that's another thing I really had to sort of soak in during this experience was the fact that these people trusted me enough to travel to a foreign country for a week, not really knowing anybody there, including myself. I mean, yeah, you follow me, you you follow my work, but you don't know me. And you were willing to spend seven whole days in a place that you don't know, where you can't just like call your friend up, escape to your mom's house, like leave, you know, you're there, you're committed to this experience, not really knowing what to expect. And that was a beautiful testimony for me and the work that I do. Um, And it was which is really nice to soak that in and savor it. The fact that I've been able to build such substantial connections through social media, which sometimes I can't stand, but I also can't help but notice the magic that it can create like moments like this, um, where you trust me enough to do that. And I don't take that lightly. You know, I think that's, that's such a, that's important. It's really important. And the quality of people I was surrounded by. I was like, wow, like everyone on this trip is just so beautiful in so many ways. Anyway, I'm jumping ahead. So the welcome dinner was beautiful. You know, we, we got to know each other better. It was almost like summer camp, you know, you like got thrown into this thing. You got to meet all these new people. And the next day we were thrown into our first excursion, which was zip lining. Some people were a little apprehensive about doing the zip lining experience, um, but ultimately when it came time to do it, everyone chose to do it, which I love to see. Um, and it was beautiful too, to notice how the excursions were already in the itinerary. They weren't necessarily things I chose, yet they aided in the whole experience. The fact that the first thing we did was a physical activity that required a lot of trust and that also brought up a lot of fear helped us solidify that community aspect, that support, that trust within each other, which I saw later on when we did the workshops, which were more emotional trust. By building that physical trust with each other, it helped us open up for the moments when we were vulnerable with each other. So we go to do this zip lining tour and it was basically 10 different zip lines that we all did. And of course, (laughs) it started raining a little bit the day before. So then we were like, oh shit, what if it starts raining while we zip line? That'll be interesting. And what do you think happened? We literally did the first zip line. And then immediately after the first one, and mind you, we have 10. So after the first one, it starts pouring and I'm not, I'm talking like a downpour. It's not one of these, oh, it's like two minutes of a light drizzle. No, bitch. It's raining. It is. I'm soaked. We are drenched and we're just like, oh, oh, we're still doing this. Okay. Cause the men who were leading this excursion were like, yeah, you know, you're fine. Don't worry about it. So we were ziplining in tropical downpour. And when I tell you that made the experience 10 times better, it was, it was some, I don't even have the word. It was just, it was like dramatic, but in the best way. Um, And so you're ziplining through the rainforest and you are experiencing nature in such a profound way while it's raining like this was a beautiful cleansing experience it's almost like nature knew you guys are here to heal you're here to release you're here to cleanse let me help you and she said rain and we were like yes flying through the rainforest in the rain while cheering each other on supporting each other facing our fear of heights facing our fear of being seen, trying, facing our fear of doing something new. It was really, really impactful. And we talked about that for the entire trip. And so after that zip lining experience, um, it really brought us together. And I feel like nothing was the same after that. We added an excursion. It wasn't on the itinerary, but people had mentioned and myself included, I was like, I really want to go to a waterfall and I want to go to a hot spring. 
and we made it happen. We went to this volcano called shit. What was it called? I should have, I should have had my notes before I did this, but I wanted to wing it like I always do. Anyway, I'll think of the name and I'll put everything in the description. But I remember when we were driving up towards the volcano, Mayor was explaining the story behind the name. And it basically translates to um, like the corner of the old woman or something like that. And it was a name given because there used to be a woman who was a shaman and like a witch doctor in that area. And so they named it after her. And I just, while he was telling us this, I was like, there's no fucking way, you know, like the coincidence, which I don't believe in. There's no way that we decided to go here of all places. It wasn't even on the itinerary and we're a group of women who are healing. That's substantial. That volcano erupted a few days before we got there. Everything just sort of aligned. And so we got there, we took in the sites and we went to the waterfall. I loved this waterfall because in Costa Rica, La Fortuna is like the well-known waterfall, which we weren't able to go to because that was way far away from where we were. This was perfect because it was a smaller size waterfall, but still very impactful. And we basically had it to ourselves. And I knew I, every time I travel, I'm like, I want to face fears when I travel. I want to show myself how courageous I am, how adventurous I am. Because in my everyday life, I don't know that I get to experience my adventurous side as much as I'd like. So when I travel, I make it a point and an intention to do that. So I knew no matter what, I was getting in this waterfall in the second. And as the leader, right, I went first with the zip lines. I went first in the waterfall because I'm here to set the example. And I went into the waterfall and that shit was cold okay like freezing cold and I knew for me cold exposure is something I've been unwilling to try even though I know it's really good for me because a lot of my healing has been somatic I have a history of dissociating and detaching from my body and so cold exposure is really good for kind of reconnecting with your body and um, activating your body in that way and when I tell you my shit was activated like it's so cold you can't help but feel every cell of your body once you go in it add that to the incredible pressure of that waterfall I felt it in my chest the waterfall was really representative of the way I saw it of a very strong woman a very strong woman in the sense that you forget how powerful water can be how strong water can be Anytime I tried to swim under the waterfall, I couldn't. The current that the waterfall was creating was so powerful. It kept pushing anyone that got too close away. And I was like, well, shit, that, that resonates, sounds familiar. And I, I couldn't help but notice that that's, that's a thing, you know, water is very fragile and it's very strong at the same time. And when you try to get too close to a woman, a very strong and powerful woman who is also very soft and fragile. If you just try to penetrate that epicenter of her without taking the proper focus and care of earning your way in, you'll get pushed out. And that's exactly what it was. And so instead of trying to force my way underneath, I just floated. I let her take me where she wanted me to go. And that was a beautiful experience of just floating in the water, feeling the pressure of the waterfall. I felt it in my chest and I really wanted to cry, but I also did not want to freak anyone out because everyone ended up getting in the water. And I know they were scared because again, we talked about it and there were multiple people who were afraid of uh, getting in the water, swimming in the water, feeling the coldness of that water, but they did it anyway. Um, and that was so just inspirational to see, you know, it would have been so easy to just be like, nah, I'm good. And even if that was the case, that's okay. Honor yourself. But no one did that. 
everyone went into the different experiences a little hesitant, but they did it anyway. And what that showed them was that you're capable of more than you think you are. You're not who you set yourself up to be. You're more than that. And you're willing to show yourself that. So after the waterfall experience, we went to the nearby hot spring to sort of rejuvenate and pamper our skin. And there were multiple hanging bridges we had to go through, which I think that was the scariest part, to be honest. And even um, we had 10 different hot spring pools at varying degrees. And we just soaked and the we had the volcanic mud that we put all over our bodies. And it was just a beautiful way to honor our bodies and honor our um, self-care and self-love. And we connected in the pools and talked about the trip and, and discussed sort of what we came in with as far as our intentions and then what we are noticing about ourselves as it continued. And it was just a beautiful way. I know I keep saying beautiful and it's probably annoying, but I don't have any other word to describe it, but it was a really beautiful way of connection. And it was a great foundation for the workshop. So I hosted a soul gazing workshop and I had no idea what to expect because it was the first time I was going to execute it with a group. And so we used a workshop space within the hotel and facilitated this workshop, which was incredibly vulnerable. Um, it required a lot of soul gazing with others and also within yourself and being seen in such a transparent way will bring things up. Uh, there were definitely tears, which anyone who follows my work knows, like you're bound to cry working with me. It's like a, a thing. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, but it's a thing. and it really helped us see ourselves and see each other in such a deeper way that also then lent itself to the camaraderie that was built within the group. So we did that workshop. We had dinners together, you know, outside of the hotel, we ventured to different places. We also went on a uh, coffee cacao tour with, Tio Leo, which, you know, his face is all over the province we were at because he uh, makes the coffee and the cacao. We toured his plantation. We got to taste so many different exotic fruits. Mirna was making us all the good treats to munch on while we were learning all about the history of Costa Rican coffee and cacao and natural healing remedies. We also made empanadas and ate them, obviously. Um, empanadas are a little harder to make than I anticipated. Mine definitely ripped apart, but they did some surgery on it to fix it up. And we just learned so much. And again, everything sort of led to this teamwork. And it's funny because, you know, I'm hosting this retreat and it's one of many that I hope to do. And so, of course, I have to grab content. But if I'm being honest, the best moments weren't captured on camera. And I think that's just the way life is. When you're really present and when you're really in it, trying to pick up a phone and record or a camera and record, like it's just, it's not going to happen. So the most impactful moments were not captured. However, if you are a visual person like I am, I am going to be uploading a whole recap with everything we did capture so that you can get a better idea of what things look like. It was an intentional experience and it was clear that the people who were there were meant to be there and the conversations we had even at breakfast, you know, the hotel was really nice and setting up a nice long table facing the beach for us to have breakfast together every morning. And then every morning I also led um, some a morning ritual, which was some body stretching and meditation. And it was a perfect way to start the day. And the conversations that we would have, it was like people kept just watching us and apparently coming up to different people at the retreat and asking if we were just a group of friends on this trip which I think is a huge uh, confirmation of the energy that was cultivated on this trip. 
And we also went on a sunset boat ride and dinner where we took uh, this big boat out along the coast and we got to swim in the middle of the ocean, which that shit freaks me out. Okay. Cause I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is under me right now. What's about to pop up. Like I can create 101 thriller movies in my mind with everything, but I was like, fuck it. You know, I'm in Costa Rica. That's the other thing. When you travel, you're just like, am I going to have this opportunity again? I don't know. So I'm going to make the most of it now. And I did jumped in that ocean and I floated and swam. And before I knew it, every single person was in the ocean. It didn't matter if they were snorkeling, if they were swimming with a noodle, if they were floating, if they were just wanting a dip and then to go back, but they did it. And we were able to have that experience together. It was also open bar and they played music. And so, you know, we were having a good time and they kept us out there until it was time for sunset. So we were able to see the sunset, which was the most beautiful thing. I I can't even begin to tell you. I couldn't stop staring at the sky. I must have taken like 25,000 pictures of the same thing. It was so beautiful to see. Um, and funny enough, while we were out there, Venus was visible in the sky. So we kept seeing Venus in the sky as well. I think that is also very aligned with the work that we were doing because a lot of the work I do is heart-centered work. I believe the heart is the bridge between our humanity and our divinity. And so that's where I focus. I think that's where we house our freedom. That's where we house our power. And so strengthening our heart, opening our heart and really becoming acquainted and safe within our heart space is important to me. So we had a beautiful uh, sunset boat ride. And again, like the, the moments in between, you know, we did a coffee scrub and facial at night, you know, in one of the girls hotel rooms, they had happy hour at the hotel. So we would meet up and have some drinks and discuss the day or discuss our lives or discuss the parallels that we were all experiencing. Um, and then, you know, before you knew it, it was like, shit, we're almost done. Like the retreat's almost done. You could tell because on the last like day, it started to get really somber. The energy was kind of like, fuck, I, I just got here. And now I made all these great connections and we already are saying goodbye. And mind you, the whole time before we even went on the trip, we're all put in a telegram chat. So we were constantly in communication. We still are. I just messaged everyone. So, you know, it wasn't just like, Hey, we're on this trip. Goodbye. These are connections that hopefully will last a lifetime. The last night, um, before the farewell dinner, it was the full moon ceremony and the Holy fire Reiki healing experience that I facilitated, um, along with Shakem who was there on the trip. So we basically were did a workshop to release a block and did a sound bath and I did a collective card reading and the burps are coming if you know me you know this happens sometimes when I talk about anything spiritual (laughs) it's really sexy that was a very emotionally emotionally vulnerable experience Um, I did Reiki on each person there were lots of tears, there were lots of confessions, there were lots of releasing, and that was the whole point. The second one person allows themselves to be open, unconsciously, it gives permission for everyone to be open. That's exactly what happened. You hear one person crying, and then it activates something within you to finally release the thing that you keep trying to push down. Or it ends up being a sound in a vision that you're having of something else that has a message for you. Everything is just aligning and falling into place. And so we had a beautiful ceremony and reflection. And then it was time for our farewell dinner, which again, the hotel set up so beautifully for us with the beach view and these delicious mocktails that they created. And then this, uh, menu that they had for us and then it was time to say goodbye the next morning the energy from when everyone arrived to the energy when everyone left it was palpable there was a palpable shift 
there was a sense that this is not the last time we're all going to see each other. <clears throat> and it was one of those things where it's like, maybe even if it is just these one week trips a year that we take, we're doing this together because this is, this is now part of our experience of each other. And it was beautiful to just witness these connections being made and also to get that confirmation for me because I, in this work, it's really hard sometimes to figure out how to show up, you know, how am I supposed to show up? And so you try to put on these different hats of what society calls a retreat leader or a wellness teacher or whatever else. And every time it didn't really feel right for me. So I just kind of had to rely on what felt authentic to me, which is just being myself. And being myself meant I'm crying too during these ceremonies and I'm venting too. And I'm also releasing and I, because I'm human. And I think there's parts of that that make you feel like, oh, fuck, am I not, am I not in a place then to where I'm able to do this because I'm also releasing and whatever else I was transparent about that. And they were all like, well, that's why we're here. You know, that's why we gravitate towards you. That's what we love about you is that you don't pretend to know it all or to have all the answers you're just like us you know you're also going through it and I'm just like well thank god because I don't have all the answers I don't know that anyone does and I think anyone who claims that they do is someone that you should go very far away from it was beautiful confirmation for me that all anyone has ever wanted of me from me is for me to be myself and meanwhile, I've spent so much of my life trying to be who I thought everyone else wanted me to be when all they wanted me to be was me. I know. So um, while everyone else's trip ended, mine continued. A couple of friends and I ended up running a car and we drove 10 hours from the Guanacaste province all the way down to uh, the province of Limon, which is near the border of Costa Rica and Panama. And when I tell you that was a different experience, it was still great, but it was definitely different because even at the hotel, I was, you know, there are bugs like, hello, welcome to the jungle. Like there are bugs. And at the hotel, it's like these small little bugs here and there. And I'm just like, fuck, you know, like using my sandal, just smack them. Um, but at least I had AC. Cause let me tell you, when we went, we were in the jungle, we went to Puerto Viejo and we stayed at an Airbnb that was literally open air. So when I sent a video to my stepdad of our Airbnb, he was like, now that's a patio. And I was like, no, sir, that is not a patio. That is the living room. And there's the kitchen and everything is open. Like you were in the middle of the jungle. We're seeing the raccoons. We're seeing the birds. We're seeing the lizards. We're hearing the monkeys. We're seeing spiders the size of my fist. Like the only thing that's enclosed are the bedrooms. And even then they're connected to a bathroom that is not enclosed. So you're showering outside. And if any snakes or spiders or whatever want to crawl up in there, they can. There's literally nothing stopping them. So that was interesting. <laughs> I definitely made friends with a lot of critters and creatures. Um, the sounds were amazing, even though it wasn't my favorite when it came to like sleeping and wondering like is something gonna crawl into my hair and lay eggs like I don't fucking know you are so one with nature that it does something to you I kept telling my friends I felt like I was in the womb there's so much life around you in that area you are in the middle of the jungle you are hearing life constantly you are seeing life with all of the plants and the creatures and it's just green everywhere you look it's green it's raining it's you're and you're in it you are in it even the food the colors of the food are vibrant the taste of the food you can feel the vibration in the food like it's fresh and it is it was such a such an interesting experience because i feel like even though puerto viejo is just a small little town and we are showering outside with spiders and there's no AC and there's, you know, it's not what someone would consider luxury. I feel like it 
taught me what luxury actually means because the idea of luxury that we've always kind of become accustomed to the four or five star hotels, the, the air conditioning, the cleanliness, the this and that. And don't get me wrong. I love that too. Like bougie brew is still here. She didn't go anywhere, but there's another type of luxury that that kind of stuff doesn't give you. And Puerto Viejo gave me that type of luxury, which was peace. There was peace of mind. There was peace in my heart. There was calmness. There was connection. There was community. Like everyone was so kind. Everyone was operating from this frequency of just like love, Pura Vida. Like that is, it's not just a saying, it's a way of life out there. And you felt it. There was something within the air there that you just felt connected to everything and everyone. And that was a type of luxury that I didn't realize I needed until I got back. And I immediately, my body immediately felt the shift. I felt heavy. I had a headache. The food wasn't hitting like it was out there. And I was just like, we just have it all backwards, you know, like we have place so much priority and importance on things that have to do with superficial luxuries, but the actual luxury that penetrates your spirit, your soul, your heart space, that's the stuff that we constantly overlook. When I was in Puerto Viejo, I had so many experiences that were really profound for me. Um, and I want to share a couple of them with you. One was that I kept coming across black cats and as someone who was a fan of ancient Egypt, you know, Bastet and all those things, cats in general, big cat lover, that was important to me. There was some, there was a message there. And specifically there was one little black cat who came up during dinner one night. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stray animals out there and it's really sad because they are the sweetest little things. They were all so kind. And this little black cat came up to me during dinner, just meowing away. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm about to just take you home. And Jackson, my cat would not be a fan of that, but you know, I was petting her and I could tell she was hungry. So I was feeding her a little bit off of Shikem's plate because he got fish and I could tell like she's hungry and you don't know when she's going to eat again. So I ordered her a fish fillet. She was a little apprehensive at first, but she had, she, the whole dinner, she was just sitting by my feet. She was very affectionate, very sweet. And I was like, no, I need, I need to feed you. Like my mother instinct came through and I was like, I need to feed you. So I got her this fish fillet and she ended up going to town and I'm not going to lie. I thought, I still think about that cat and I'm just like, God, I hope someone else is feeding you too, because the thought of these animals going hungry hurts my heart. And the next day we went to breakfast and there was a black cat sitting on my seat. And I was like, okay. And then we just so happened to spark a conversation with this woman who was eating at the table behind us. And long story short, she was out there for her honeymoon. She ended up staying longer because she found a dog that she ended up adopting um, and did all the paperwork and all of that. And connected with these other women who are now going to open, uh, this sort of vet, uh, place. Um, sorry, I'm not doing it justice in Costa Rica for all of these homeless and stray animals. One of my retreat travelers is someone who works with animals, um, and has been looking for vet, uh, opportunities. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to connect you. Whether or not it's for this specific thing, that was a connection that, that was meant to be made. Sure as shit, this woman was on our same flight back home. So it was just a lot of synchronicities in that way that just, again, proved the magic of the area. And then the other experience was there was a trail through the jungle to a beach that we took. And on the way back, because I was like, I'm not walking through that shit in the dark. Let me tell you that right now. There are jaguars, snakes fucking I don't know what no thank you so we were walking back and my friends were all kind of just like lollygagging looking at stuff and I was like have they never watched a scary movie like this is not no like we need to keep walking 
So I end up just, I'm like focused. I'm like, just walk through, especially because I ended up seeing what well, we all did a fuck ton of crabs crawl out of their holes. And then they saw us and they all went back at the same time. And I was like, oh, there are a lot of y'all. So I'm already like itchy, you know, I'm just like, oh, like I just got to get out of here. So I'm walking through the jungle and I'm like focused. I look back at one point, I don't even see them anymore. So I'm solo dolo walking through the jungle, this jungle trail back to our Airbnb. And I end up having a moment, you know, I had this whole internal dialogue that started happening because I think I was meant to walk back alone. I was meant to do that by myself because it created a lot of fear. So I start asking myself, like, why, why is it that my thought always goes to fear? Why do I always think that every experience has to be integrated with pain? You know, I'm asking myself all these questions and you know, when you feel like you're being watched, that's exactly how I felt. I could feel that there was something watching me and I didn't know what it was. And I was just praying that it wasn't something that was looking at me like I was dinner, but I kept walking and at one point I felt someone behind me or something behind me and I swore I heard footsteps and I thought it was my friends. So I looked back and I saw nothing. I couldn't even see my friends and I was like, that was really strange. I look back, there's nothing behind me and when I turn back around, a butterfly starts flying right next to me like this and it's black with neon green and like this neon fuchsia pink. And I out loud was like, oh my gosh, you are so beautiful. And it just kept walking next to me. And then I was like, Bruna, maybe this isn't some terrifying walk through the jungle where a jaguar is going to leap out and eat you. Like maybe this is just a really beautiful walk with nature and you're able to just take it in and soak it in and savor all of these beautiful plants and animals that you don't get to see on a daily basis. And is that butterfly a guide? Was that something behind me that then morphed into a butterfly to let me know it's there? I don't know. Maybe that's the, that's the world I live in, but it was such a profound experience and one that I needed to have. And one that also led to what I did before I came back because I ended up getting a tattoo before I came back and butterflies kept coming up for me the entire trip, even during the retreat. So I got this butterfly tatted on me as a reminder um, to allow myself to come out of my cocoon, which I realized during this trip was becoming my safe place. You know, even though it was dark and painful, I was so used to the darkness and the pain that it became safe for me. And I realized that the scarier thing was to allow myself to come out of the cocoon and be the butterfly and to venture forward and to take flight, because that also meant to allow myself to be thrown into uncertainty and the unknown. I didn't like that. I so didn't like that. And the theme that I kept coming across leading up to this trip was recognizing how I'm really good at talking myself out of doing things that pull me outside of my comfort zone, even if these are great things. And it's not until I finally do it that I'm like, oh my gosh, I would have been so mad if I talked myself out of that. I would have been so mad. And so this is my reminder that I don't need to stay in my cocoon, that I'm safe and that I can take flight in whatever is next. So I just wanted to sort of share that reflection and recap with you of Costa Rica. Um, I doubt that will be my last time in Costa Rica. So I look forward to my next visit there. If you are thinking about going to Costa Rica and you have any questions, I'll gladly answer them in the comments below if I can, if I have the answer. But as for now, I am brainstorming our next retreat location. So if you have a place in mind that you would love to go and heal with community and just experience life in this way, drop it in the comments below. If you're not already, subscribe to my newsletter at returntoself.me in order to be caught up to date on everything. I am going to drop a survey for future retreats next week um, to 
get a better idea of where people are at financially for retreats, what locations are coming up for them, what it is that they'd like to do. So if you would like to uh, fill out that survey, please make sure that you are either on my Instagram or subscribe to my newsletter so you don't miss it. But thank you for watching and for listening. Obviously, this was a very impromptu thing, but I really wanted to help um, illustrate this experience for people and also just record this energy because I immediately was thrown back into like old shit. Once I, <laughs> once I touched down in America, it was like people were already testing my patience. People were already bringing that energy. And during my walk today, I was like, you know, it'd be easy to think that like, oh, maybe when you go to places and you feel that you're just meant to stay there and maybe, you know, only, you know, that, or maybe you're meant to go to these places to integrate and harness that medicine that these locations have to give you so that you can take it back to the places that need it the most. And I know that America is like, always seen as this top-notch country and I'm not shitting on America at all we have a lot of beautiful things here but we also have a lot of room for improvement especially when it comes to this sort of soulful spiritual alignment and priority of finding ways to fill ourselves up in ways that are beyond just material and capitalistic means Luxury is not just what you think it is, especially if you are not satiating your soul's desires. So to go to other countries, which may not be the richest or may not have these, you know, fancy cars and hotels and restaurants or whatever else, but you feel peace in your body, that's worth paying attention to. And that's worth wondering, how can we bring that same energy here? because we have a lot of opportunity here and we just need to direct it in the right place. So thank you for listening and for watching the full recap for our Costa Rica retreat will be up soon. So keep an eye out for that. And until then, I will talk to you later.